Hello, everyone. Welcome to a month of reunion, an online program of Global People Daily News (GPDN), an independent international news media. I am today's host, Judith. Before we begin, please subscribe, like, share, and activate the little bell. We just listened to the video "Prayer for the World." Recently, the highly transmittable variant Omicron quickly becomes a dominant strain of the coronavirus, having a significant impact on people's life and work. We hope that by praying this prayer, we can circulate positive energy all over the world, especially in 2022. Family reunions are especially important during these difficult times around the world. Once a year, each region or nation has its own time for family gatherings: Christmas, Lunar New Year, Maham, and other holidays bring families together. On these days, family members scattered across the country will rush home to be reunited. Particularly the elderly one, who are looking forward to it. Our first speaker will be Daniel, a 75 years old Swiss grandmother. She is to share her family's about her Christmas reunion. Bonjour. Je m'appelle Daniel. J'habite en Suisse. À Neuchâtel, c'est une petite ville, pas très loin de Genève et Lausanne, et je vais vous parler de Noël. Avant encore, je vais vous dire que je suis une grand maman. J'ai 75 ans et j'ai neuf petits enfants. Les aînés ont 15 ans et puis la plus jeune a quatre ans. Noël, qu'est-ce que c'est? Alors, ça peut être beaucoup de choses. Ça peut être une fête religieuse. Ça peut être l'occasion de rencontrer du monde, de rencontrer en famille ses enfants et ses petits enfants. Pour moi, c'est avant tout la rencontre des enfants qui me fait vibrer pour Noël. J'aime beaucoup cette fête et j'ai beaucoup de chance, justement parce que je ne suis pas seule. Généralement, on se rencontre pour un repas, pour allumer le sapin, et puis pour partager, pour jouer, pour、euh, pour être ensemble, tout simplement. 
Cette année, Noël a eu lieu chez moi. Nous étions, je pense, 18. Et nous avons partagé leur repas. Chacun, c'est-à-dire mes enfants, mes belles-filles, ont préparé quelque chose. Moi aussi. Ensuite, il y a eu le moment sapin. Et ça, c'est le moment que j'aime le plus, vraiment. Ce moment sapin, c'est le moment où les enfants sont assis autour du sapin et récitent des poésies, chantent ce qu'ils ont appris à l'école. Il y a ceux qui sont très à l'aise et puis il y a ceux aussi qui sont timides, qui n'osent pas, qu'on doit encourager. Chaque année aussi, pour le moment, le Père Noël vient nous rendre visite. Généralement, c'est un de mes enfants qui joue au Père Noël. Il arrive avec sa grosse voix, un habit et des coussins sous ses habits pour paraître vraiment bien important. Il leur demande comment ça va, si elles ont été sages. C'est vraiment le Père Noël comme on le voit dans les contes. Ça aussi, c'est un beau moment. Cette année, il y a eu ma plus petite fille, Ariane, qui a donné ses lolettes au Père Noël. Pour elle, ça a été un grand moment parce que ça voulait dire « Maintenant, je n'aurai plus de lunettes. » Elle a été bien félicitée, évidemment. Et puis, le Père Noël lui a donné aussi un petit cadeau, quand même. Il y a eu les poésies, les chants. De temps en temps, on ne comprend pas du tout. Voilà, alors Noël... C'est une belle fête, mais je pense aussi souvent à toutes les personnes qui sont seules. Seules chez elles, ou bien qui n'ont pas de famille, ou qui ont perdu leur mari, un membre de leur famille, ou les personnes qui, qui n'ont pas d'argent et qui, qui sont là, qui attendent finalement que les fêtes passent. Et pour ces personnes-là, euh, il y a des Noëls collectifs qui s'appellent Noël Autrement et qui les rassemblent justement ces jours-là, heureusement. Noël, c'est aussi la fête où on aimerait que tout le monde soit heureux, tout le monde soit bien et, et qui ouvre une perspective de paix, d'amour entre les gens et de bien-être de tout le monde. Et d'ailleurs, pour l'année prochaine, c'est ce qu'on souhaite. C'est-à-dire que les gens vivent pour les autres et pas seulement repliés sur eux-mêmes. Que les gens s'écoutent davantage. Il me semble qu'avec le Covid, on n'écoute plus personne. On a envie de parler et puis l'écoute est très mauvaise. Alors je souhaiterais vraiment que chacun puisse écouter l'autre, même si l'autre a un autre avis. Et puis, j'aimerais bien sûr que on, les personnes qui n'ont... Qui, qui arrivent juste à vivre, puissent le faire, puissent avoir davantage de moyens pour avoir une vie décente. Voilà, ce serait mes Wow, what a lovely and heartfelt reunion date. The entire family participates in the celebration of Christmas. The photos are touching and heartwarming. Thank you so much, Daniel, for your blessings. Sadly, fear of COVID has increased social isolation and individualism. As a result, we must listen to others even if their opinions differ from ours. We can give more to those in need if we show more respect for others and bring more positive energy to them. I really love it. As an outcome of the epidemic, people's lives have been changed. It has made a significant difference at work and in school. Is this influencing your life as well? So, how do you handle surprises? 
Now, let's listen to Nigerian social worker Smith Lakosha sharing his life and experience as a result of the pandemic. My name is Smith Lakosha. I'm so excited to share my experiences and during this COVID-19 era to a global peace day we need. Thank you for giving me the opportunity as well. I'm happy new year. Um, so, just like what I'm about to share, it will also infect trigger down to February um, 2022. And uh, I just want to say that here in Nigeria, uh, I'm a social activist actually, and uh, the experiences have been missed. You know, some people were able to cope during the COVID-19 era or the pandemic period. Some were not able to cope because some people are out of jobs and a lot of you know, issues that they need. They love the night in the shop for some people. But just a good news about love. You know, we were able to come down with our family, have time with families, music family, share with family, talk to family. We were able to unite. And that was a good thing about the pandemic period. We were able to unite with our families, have some conversation, have some intimacy, have some you know, good time all together. We were able to even have some good job opportunities. The more that we come back, we were able to reunite with them, share our talks, work for uh, you know, different organizations all over the world. So I think it's just a nice work. So thank you very much, and Global Peace Daily News. Um, once again, speaking from Nigeria, position Thank you for Smith's generous offer. Yes, positive thinking. The COVID-19 pandemic isn't all bad, but it's a good opportunity to strengthen our relationships with our families because we have more chances to be with and spend time with them. Meeting family, staying with children, Talking with each other and being able to get together are all useful to an international family's ability. Communication and intimacy are no better. Anna from Pakistan, our next speaker, feels the same way. In Pakistan, informal social gatherings with friends and families are an important part of the social life. Her life has been significantly changed as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic. She is to share her experience with the challenge and what she learned as a result of her actions. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. I am Amina from Pakistan and uh, today I will discuss uh, uh, the social gathering during the pandemic and afterwards back physical socialization. Informal social gathering with friends and family is an important part of our social life. As we affected due to the COVID-19 plague, the squeeze uh, our facilities to simply meet with others. Many people were involuntary to stop or reschedule evocations proceedings, such as reschedule marriages or to going to join it or meetings or parties and family crowds. I planned to go and attend all events of my friends and family by adopting precautions to protect me and others. As in the COVID scenario, when it comes to uh, any kind of crowd, especially events that uh, get groups of individuals together, was not out of danger. At my aunt's funeral, I was faced with my cousin overflowing the love of uh, wanting to hug me and uh, be close to me to attain my sympathy. And no one realized how serious this pandemic is. Many times I did not uh, uh, decide whether I stay at home or if I choose uh, to attend these gatherings. This will be a um, as I always uh, follow the healthcare and social gathering rules uh, issued by our government and health authorities. Many of my relatives and uh, friends laugh at me while I adopt these measures as this was rural area and uh, as in desert where already social and physical distance is lies. Uh, their homes are far away, they take time to reach even to them. They already were hosting in a vaporous windy space and uh, there was no such case found of COVID. Already small amount of people are resident here. 
and uh, I got bored and uh, planned to financial uh, affected people for sympathy. Some people did not take it too serious. They hugged me, kissed me, and put my veil off. They even give me a lesson on such kind of care adoption. I shared their uh, pandemic boundaries and financial crisis. I visited my friends and uh, my family members and this pandemic bind us together. We did lunch together, dinner together, breakfast together. Then we moved to our relatives to support them and to together. We planned together to plantation in our area, in our school, as this was plantation drive already by our government in these days. I delivered some session on water conservation uh, in the rural areas and later on financial assistance and support. I teach them the skills to own and how to survive in these days and after. I manage my family members' birthdays as I did never before. Even some of my siblings' date of birth was not in my mind. So we visited other places together and we felt others' pain. We did prayers near the seas, landmarks, deserts, and enjoyed rain together. And special celebrations uh, uh, we celebrated. We stayed on um, bad days together, we fun together, we laughed together, and when there is unity, no pain could gain or feel. So we haven't felt any pain. Although we did good and we were frightened while gathering, no doubt some conspiracies, conspiracies were revolving about the COVID truth. And uh, yes, we feeling just uh, we was uh, feeling just uh, all are going to die the world is going to uh, end and yes i realized the love of humanity in all uh, and i started virtual conferences and uh, often at someone's residence and i gained a good amount of knowledge and public awareness uh, as families have been affected for two years due to corona and now the winter is coming which is a sign that uh, withering away is coming to an end and the uh, sense of life and hope is awakening march is the month that uh, spring starts this means a lot dead leaves land and streams uh, change into hope and life we are always concerned about small holidays these days uh, and especially we are in the year People here want to do something important or new. They do it in this month, like uh, getting married, started a business, and some other parties and works. Flower blooms, flower blooms, indicating spiritual and uh, physical freedom. Many festivals and peoples in Pakistan celebrate the starting of the season by flying the colorful cars in, in the sky in the sun. Horse and cattle show for seven days, Mela, Chitrari festival, Joshi or Chilam or Noroz and many games in this month. Good weather is coming. Families who have been away from each other all long now the distance are coming to an end and they are going to meet each other to be true, God to be true. The time has come for heavy burdens to be lifted from minds and our bodies. And of course, it could be a new messenger of health. If we think better, it will be better. Hope this thing will bring happiness for, for, for all of us and smile on the faces. This kind of hope is needed in all situations that keep us warm and alive. Thank you. Anna, thank you for your kind words. Despite the fact that the epidemic has disrupted their original social life more, she has been inspired to visit families and friends, increase interactions, share epidemic prevention information, plan to future together, live together, and unite. NW in Tom. In contrast to Emma, has a different point of view. 
she works as an MRI technician at Children's Hospital Los Angeles in California, USA. Her job puts her at a much higher risk of the infection than the general public. How can she defend herself while also protecting others in the hospital in the face, face to the escalating Omicron epidemic? What about her family? Let's listen to what she had to say. Hi everyone, my name is Marie Tong. Almost three years of pandemic, does pandemic people close together or far apart? I would say that close together. We don't gather online or person frequently during the COVID pandemic. Technology is more advanced in this year due to pandemic. A lot of people gather online, online meeting, virtual classes, computer games, and a meeting with friends and families. Online meetings is more convenient, save money, and a safer way to keep our close together. By online gathering, we can meet anytime, anywhere, and in any different country. We don't need to buy expensive tickets to meet each other or take a lease from work or school. Meanwhile, the technology is advanced. That's opening up proper prosperity will also lead to everything. It is not surprising that infection spreading known, unknown, or new strain viruses are found. The human coronavirus found in 1995 and it has seven strains that infect human. COVID-19 is one of the viruses that outbreak worldwide in 2019. It is airborne infected disease. Airborne disease transmit infection via air. According to head Harvard Education, the coronavirus spread mainly from person to person. A person infected with coronavirus, even one with no symptoms, they can emit aerosols when they talk or breathe. Aerosols are infectious viral particles that can flow or drive around in the air for up to three hours. Another person can breathe in this aerosol and become infected with the coronavirus. Whatever and how the virus is spread, we as a human need to protect ourselves and our loved one. We have to cut the change of infective process. How? We need to follow the rules and regulations of prevention of infection. CDCs and all health organizations recommend everyone needs to wear face masks, frequent washing hands, social distance, and get vaccinated, and so on. Most of people think I am already fully vaccinated, I cannot get infected. That's wrong. Vaccine does not protect us 100% and is just cutting part of the change of infected process. So we need to follow the sign, no touch policy. Be patient, wait for next walk. Don't use finger, use elbow. If you touch those, don't touch your face, nose, eyes before you wash your hands. Don't just wet your hands, wash your hands. Properly wearing face masks. Sum up, we should follow useful tips to stop the spread of infection. Wash your hands frequently, wear face masks, practice social distancing, stay positive, Avoid touching eyes, nose, and mouth, and increase your lung capacity with breathing exercise. And very important is watching your symptoms before and after personally meet with others or gathering. Headache, cold, cough, loss of taste, tired, muscle ache, and cold-like symptoms. If you have symptoms, get the test, take a rest, hydrate your body, and self-quarantine. As a medical worker, 
I am one of the high risk to get infected. I do follow all. Follow all. Moreover, I do practice Tai Chi and Qigong every day. That strengthen my immune system. By practicing Qigong, it can increase our lung capacity, slow breath and movement. That more focus on our body and mind, calm and get energy. Many scientists prove benefit of practicing Qigong. Qigong has the potential to play a role in prevention, treatment, and rehabilitations of respiratory infections such as COVID-19. We cannot be stay home forever to avoid infected. We have to go out and do what we need to do for survive. If prevention is important, the cut the change of infectious process. I thank the advanced technology that people close together in pandemic, and appreciate to all scientists, healthcare workers, all friends and families. We all follow the rules, science, and. Professional recommendations by doing those COVID and infections will beat us. Sure, we can fight and against the pandemic. I wish you all safe and happy. Thank you for your sharing. Yes, the popularizations and easy abuse of the technologies allow us to stay in touch with our families while keeping a safe distance during the. Epidemic. Vaccinations also give us immunity to fight the virus. But it is important to know that vaccines do not provide complete protection, because it only interrupts a portion of the infection chain. Precautions are even more important. The video below enables everyone to face the never-ending battles against. It. Epidemics by providing three don'ts, by do's, and six tricks. Let us defend our families in the hope that all of the, our friends are safe and well. As the COVID-19 pandemic continues, we need to take preventative measures to stop the spread. Here are the five do's and three don'ts, as well as the six tips to help you stay safe and healthy. The five do's are: wash your hands, drink more warm water, do more exercise, be happy, and be more careful. The three don'ts are: don't lose your temper, don't worry, and don't be anxious. The other six tips are: wash your hands frequently, wear a face mask. Practice social distancing. Stay mentally positive. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth, and increase your lung capacity with breathing exercises. Make sure you follow these tips to keep yourself and others safe. Together, we can get through this. Thank you for taking time to watch. I wish you all the best, and hope to see you again soon. Bye bye.